Okay. I believe it is time to call to order the assessor's meeting of August 20th. It is 30. And the, yeah, I'm going to open the meeting. And the first thing I'm going to do is read. Um, in accordance with the governor's order, suspension meeting law uh, due to the coronavirus outbreak. The meeting of the Board of Assessors is physically closed to the public to avoid group conversation. However, to view this meeting in progress, please visit the Facebook page, lakecam.tv. So, I'm not sure if I've that incorrectly said. Um, we have meeting minutes to approve from July 1st. We went and emailed the office to go to all the board members. There is a business office of the office. That approve this to be initialed off. So I will entertain a motion to approve the meeting minutes of uh, July 21st. Anyone want to make a motion? A motion to approve the minutes from July 21st as written. Okay, Jesse made the motion. John, you want to second that? You're on mute, John. There should be a little spot there, John, where you can unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. You second that, John? Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? We have to do everything roll call. So, Jesse. Aye. John? Aye. And myself, aye. Motion passes. Um, okay, I'm going to... Uh, Turn over agenda item number three, four, and five to Harald Scheid to report uh, on residential real estate market trend, uh, review assessments, the sales ratio, and the RRG report. Yeah, so I had uh, earlier today, I'd sent you uh, a couple of attachments uh, to an email. I don't know if you have those in front of you. First one I'm going to point to is just a very simple. A uh, line graph uh, that uh, that you've probably had some time to, to to study. It doesn't require a whole lot of explanation, um, and certainly the results of this graph don't surprise us. Uh, uh, based on what we know of the, the past assessment growth, um, so uh, just to um, preface. I had mentioned at the last meeting that I was undertaking a 10-year market trend study. Uh, that market trend study uh, allows me to do a number of things. One is to uh, develop trend factors. So I can, uh, I can take a sale that took place, uh, say, five years ago and trend that forward to the present uh, to provide an indicator um, of, uh, of the current value of a uh, Property. So there are roughly a thousand Lakeville properties that uh, have sold in the last 10 years, or just under a thousand. Uh, those thousand properties uh, were the basis of, of this uh, trend study. Um, and uh, out of the box, the first analysis I did was to look at um, how uh, residential uh, single family homes have fared. Uh, in the past 10 years. You'll see from the chart that, uh, uh, that we've seen roughly uh, 38 to 40 percent price appreciation in those, uh, in those 10 years. Contrast that to waterfront properties and uh, here we see uh, roughly a uh, 55, almost 60 percent increase in property values. So uh, the study affirms what we have, have known and experienced that uh, waterfront property values have been rising at a, a faster clip than single family homes as a whole. Uh, any questions on that front? No, sir. Not me. Okay. So, um, there are a number of pieces uh, to this analysis that will uh, I'll be sharing over the coming months. Uh, but uh, the one I'd like to share with you now is uh, an assessment to sale ratio uh, summary report 
Um, this doesn't give you all the gory detail, uh, but uh, summarizes the fundamental assessment statistics that uh, drive uh, our assessment system. And, um, and so uh, our single family homes, of course, represent our largest uh, property class by far. Uh, you'll see here in the 10 year period, it's actually 10 years and six months uh, worth of sales, uh, 978 properties. Uh, mind you, I called out any properties that had an indication of some sort of um, improvement subsequent to the sale. So these should be homes that are largely uh, the same as they were 10 years ago. Uh, maybe a little depreciation here and there, but uh, so 978 sales and they point to um, after making uh, the time adjustments um, to bring them all to a, a January 1, 2020 value basis, you'll see that our assessment level is uh, hovering at about 89%. Um, just more for the public uh, than anyone else, the assessment to sale ratio is um, is a uh, an index that uh, takes essentially the assessed value, divides that by the sale price, where the assessed value equals a sale price, you have a factor of one, you do the math, uh, $500,000 assessed value divided by $500,000 sale, yields you a factor of one. If that uh, factor falls below 1.0, uh, and in the case of the single families, we're at 0.89, that implies that overall our assessments uh, are below sale price. Um, and um, as, as, as you on the board know, that requires a response on our part a response that uh, would have us in the coming weeks uh, increasing valuations uh, to uh, uh, to get closer to a a 1.0 or 100 percent level of value. Uh, now we have intentionally in the past targeted our assessment level at about 95 percent. So the fact that we're at 89% or maybe even a little less than 89% suggests that uh, uh, there's been about something like uh, five to 7% appreciation overall in property values. New assessments for, for this upcoming fiscal year will have to, um, to uh, include a, a, about a five to 7% increase in valuations to get us closer to that um, that uh, statutory mandated uh, full valuation level. Um, I'll take a, a breather for a second. Any questions? I don't have a question, but maybe just for clarification, if, if anyone is paying attention or listening to us, um, this is, and, and you may have said it up front, but I just want to uh, get it on record. I mean, the, the median, um, number was supposed to be coming up at that's dictated by the DOR that that's that's not something that it's actually uh, in effect in statute right and the DOR, statute. Is, DOR oversees it so if we're out of compliance with the statute uh, we're right. going to have some issues to deal with, with from the state exactly we are presently um, out of compliance uh, we were this time last year we brought our valuations up and brought them into compliance We've fallen out of compliance, and that's really a function uh, not of the work that we do, but of, of the market. Uh, the market uh, has surged uh, uh, upward, and leaving our assessments uh, low relative to uh, sale prices. Um, let me uh, talk a little bit about that COD, the coefficient of dispersion. That is a measure of the uh, average variation above or below that median assessment level. So if our median level is 89%, that is to say, um, 
if overall we're valuing properties at 89% of full market value, individual properties and their assessment to sale ratios vary about plus or minus uh, 8.6% um, uh, above or below that, that median. Um, to get a COD of zero uh, implies, uh, generally implies uh, uh, that in every case, our assessment equals sale price. Uh, that is uh, uh, fundamentally impossible to achieve. Um, that uh, would, uh, the, the valuation process uh, um, of course imposes uh, various systems and with those systems valuation models and those models uh, attempt uh, to um, uh, to estimate as, as closely and as best we can what uh, a property will sell for but of course there's a lot of variability in the marketplace that we can't anticipate and model for so uh, generally um, for single family homes, our COD cannot exceed 10.99%. So our COD is in compliance at 8.6%. But generally, uh, after the uh, revaluation process, we'll see that COD actually drop a bit and our assessments tighten up. Um, typically, we uh, end up uh, after the revaluation process with a COD of around 6%. Aral, which, um, I just don't know off the top of my head, which economic neighborhood is waterfront? So the waterfronts, if you go about a third of the way down, you see economic neighborhoods. Yeah. Um, neighborhood, uh, let me just comment there, neighborhoods 160 through um, 180 are, are kind of the um, Lakeville's average neighborhood, if you look at the bulk of our construction that took place in the 60s and 70s, 80s, most of those homes are in, um, in neighborhood 160 to 180. Uh, 160 to 180. Um, at the top of the heap are waterfront um, properties, and those would be uh, any neighborhood that has a 300 series uh, neighborhood code. So 300 to 342 would be a waterfront but lesser waterfront location. Uh, 345 to 350 would be kind of an average waterfront. And then our, our um, best waterfront locations would be in that 160 uh, 360 category. So interest, interestingly, I think uh, with uh, our response in the last several years uh, in getting our waterfront values up, uh, I think we, we kind of uh, hit the lid, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, that was why I was asking. It seems like the correction needs to come in some other areas, not the 300 to 342 may need to be tweaked a little, but the, the real correction needs to happen in some other other economic neighborhoods as opposed to the waterfront, which has already been taken the front yeah. just the real estate market. Yes, uh, I would concur. So what this, uh, I, I'm not going to bore you with all the gory details of, uh, that are shown or emerge from this um, uh, list of, of categories. But let me just comment that what uh, our charge is, is not only to lift values uh, generally in response to the market, but to also look for emerging uh, inequities. For example, are low-end homes being over or undervalued relative to high-end homes? Uh, and um, uh, we know in the last few years that uh, higher end homes have tended to um, come in overvalued relative to uh, lower end homes. Uh, we kind of explain that by uh, um, noting that uh, there are a lot of baby boomers who are looking to downsize, sell the uh, bigger, more expensive home in favor of a smaller home. Uh, you've got um, uh, general economics that, that, uh, that favor smaller, uh, typically single story dwellings where colonials were uh, big uh, in the market uh, 10, 15 years ago. 
single story living is where people want to be. Uh, and those tend to be uh, the rancher ranches and, and uh, certain styles that uh, are towards the lower end of the value spectrum. Um, so um, there is um, there is a sense here that there's not uh, 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 that we've solved the inequities, largely solved the inequities, um, uh, low end to high end. Um, there are um, there is or what um, I noted when I looked at these statistics. If you go down towards the bottom of the page under living area, um, you'll see a, a progression of ratios from 0.88 in the very small homes to 0.95 in the very large homes. That to me uh, might indicate uh, the uh, need to recalibrate our, what we call our building curve. Um, so, um, so as you uh, as your home grows in size, we would probably moderate a little bit uh, a building size factor that would uh, bring um, bring um, higher end homes uh, in line with the, the uh, mainstream uh, housing mix. Um, we don't see any disparities uh, based on age. Uh, older homes, newer homes, they're all. Um, relatively uniformly valued when I stratify the ratios by, uh, by age. Um, there are individual styles that we'll probably want to look at. And I want to point out what really jumps out to me is the, the lower end homes. These are the cottages. I think a lot of our smaller seasonal lakefront properties, uh, we have uh, generally very high coefficients of dispersion telling me that um, uh, that there's probably some work that needs to be done to flesh out why our assessments aren't syncing up uh, better uh, with with that uh, subclass of property. Okay. Any questions for Harald? No, for me. All right. Well, I appreciate the uh, report, a lot of valuable information, and we know we have some adjustments to make going forward. But uh, as I've always said, as long as they're equitable, at the end of the day, the, the valuation uh, doesn't necessarily matter. We just got to make sure everyone is, is being valued the same as the, someone else who has a similar piece of property. That's the beauty of the uh, uh, Massachusetts mandate to annually uh, visit or revalue properties. Uh, it allows us to keep on top of those uh, market changes and trends. And, and uh, there was a day and time when communities revalued once every three years, you let three years go by and then you have these significant uh, jumps in value. Um, we've, we've really, I think, done a great job in moderating uh, those, uh, those increases. Uh, Leave it to you, Harald, to, to work in the term beauty when we're talking about assessments. <laughs> Nothing beautiful about assessments, is that what you're saying? <laughs> not, a, not a single thing, and if anyone is watching, I'm sure they'll agree with me. So, <laughs> um, I think if we're done with the reports, we could move on to your RIG report. Yeah, so uh, there is actually a segue in all of this, uh, and that is that <clears throat> on our assessment calendar, um, we're uh, looking to wrap up our new growth inspections. Norman, my colleague, is across the room here. Uh, he and I spoke this morning. And Norman, we're, we're going to try to wrap up everything like in the next several weeks. Yeah. Yep. So early September, we'll have all of our uh, new growth uh, inspections done that, that would include uh, principally uh, new homes, additions, renovations, that sort of thing. Anything that would lead to uh, an improvement translating into a higher valuation. Once that's done, um, I'll be capturing the, um, pers uh, uh, the uh, growth uh, revenues, reporting that to the selectmen who are anxiously awaiting those numbers. Um, and, then, um, and then from there, we'll launch into the implementation of 
the interim revaluation. So I mentioned that uh, we're going to have to take values up somewhere around five to seven percent. Uh, that all happens uh, through a recalibration of our land system of land and building tables, uh, all those rates that play into our evaluations will have to be lifted. Uh, in lifting those, I have to test the, uh, the results along the way to make sure that <clears throat> our assessments are uh, coming into line with uh, DOR regs. Uh, and, uh, and then after that, uh, we'll be looking to uh, head to uh, tax rate setting. And I'm actually hoping that we can have um, a classification hearing early this year. Uh, perhaps even the middle of October uh, would be my hope. Um, That'd be great. I don't know if we have a special town meeting that needs to happen to balance a budget. Uh, we'll have to. Uh, my understanding is we will have to have something, uh, but there's been nothing, no no time, um, no time associated, the date associated with it yet. Um, thank you. Uh, let me just report also, uh, I checked in with Brian Pelletier with uh, RRC and um, they're hoping to wrap up personal property. Um, I found a box on uh, my desk today from RRC and it turns out it was last year's report. Um, I, uh, I quickly went to the marijuana facilities to look for new assessments and couldn't find them there. Uh, <laughs> reached out to Brian and so what book are you looking at? We haven't even uh, uh, sent you the, uh, the new valuations. So I'm uh, in a way relieved uh, because of course I wasn't finding Nature's Remedy and Bountiful Farms listed in, in, the, uh, in the report. Uh, but uh, next couple of weeks or so we should see personal property uh, come our way. Uh, with that, uh, the new personal property assessments uh, and of note, of course, that the two uh, new marijuana facilities. I understand uh, that we're looking at um, on uh, Nature's Remedy about a $2.8 million uh, uh, value on their personal property assets, uh, and then something more like $1.4 million for Bountiful Farms. Um, there is um, question around uh, leasehold improvements uh, to the real estate and uh, I reached out to the Taunton Assessor's Office, haven't heard back yet uh, on how they're handling uh, leasehold improvements there. Um, what I, uh, assuming I don't hear anything, um, I'll be uh, reaching out to those two entities to get an itemized or detailed cost of uh, all of the uh, climate control uh, apparatus, uh, piping, uh, everything that they've added to the real estate, uh, the buildings to uh, to build out their uh, facilities. And I think there's uh, some additional growth, perhaps even significant uh, growth revenue wrapped up in those leasehold improvements. Yeah. Um, hey, I don't, I don't so beyond that, uh, that's kind of my report. Report, uh, John, board members. Okay, back to me. So, uh, did anyone have any questions oh, well, actually, for all on uh, that it generates a bill? If you put it on to us and we mail them out. So okay, let's uh, do the rest of this relatively quickly. So, uh, we have some monthly motor vehicle excise abatement reports that are in the office. Um, so as I always say at these meetings, uh, please make sure um, when you get an opportunity to by the office to sign um, those reports. Uh, I would appreciate it. We would appreciate it. Uh, same thing with uh, agenda item number seven, a motor vehicle commitment in, uh, number four and uh, in the warrant that goes along with it. Uh, I believe um, I have signed any invoices um, in regards to agenda item number eight. Um, but if there's anything there when you when you start, uh, please feel free to put your John Hancock on it. Um, and also, uh, any of the chapter applications that are there to be signed, uh, is thing we need to do ahead of time, or are they? Well, the 
the applications that went out are uh, applications for the next fiscal year, okay. uh, fiscal year 2022. And typically I bring those to you along about December, uh, leading up to January 1st, uh, after we've set our tax rate and gotten everything else um, okay. handled. So we don't, we don't have any chapter right now in the office to your knowledge. Well, there's there. I think uh, there's some lean releases in that that are part of the folder. Okay. All right. Um, uh, any old business? Uh, I do have one item under new business, um, and we need to come up with a uh, <laughs> with a process here. As, as I keep encouraging people to stop by the office and, and sign what we need to sign, uh, because obviously we. we my understanding is we're going to continue to meet remotely for the uh, for the near future, probably well into the fall, if not longer. Um, so, I do we we have a couple of options here. Obviously, you can stop by at any time during the day, um, and um, there is a key code on that back door to let you in um, when you're there. Obviously, I'm not going to announce it over a public meeting, but when you're there the next time, whether it's Norm or Harald or, or Linda, you can check with them. They'll give you the code so you can get in. Uh, the second aspect is if you happen to go after hours, which I know everyone's uh, schedule doesn't accommodate being there during the course of normal business, um, there is a key that you need uh, to get access to in order to literally get into the assessor's office in order to gain access, which I think, uh, you know, I know John's around town periodically throughout the day. Jesse, I don't, I don't think you necessarily have that luxury on a regular basis. So um, in talking to Nate, um, what we could do is uh, put a lockbox outside to put, uh, maybe not even outside, but inside to put a key in. So that way you guys can get into that box, grab the key, unlock the door, get in, sign what you need to sign. That way, if it's seven o'clock at night on the way back, Jesse, or if it's on a weekend and no one's open, uh, does that work for both of you? The lockbox? Yeah, box? sure. That'd be perfect. All right, so I'll talk to Nate and coordinate that with him and either hit, what I'm probably going to do to make sure that it gets, you know, gets translated and gets out to you correctly is I'll coordinate with Nate and have Nate take it and he'll be in touch with, with all of us uh, to let, let us know exactly how that's going to work and when it'll happen. So, cause it's kind of tough to have you guys go in and sign stuff if you can't get in there. <laughs> all right. Any other new business? Nope. Okay. Uh, I guess at this point, then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Do I have one? Anyone? You want a second? I need a first to begin with. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Jesse, you second I that? I second. Yep, I second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Jesse? Aye. John? And myself, I. Our meeting is adjourned at 3.58 p.m. Thank you, guys.